So I've been messing around with the GMK Tech M7 Pro a lot more just because I really enjoy this system. It seems to be the best system that I've tried out from GMK Tech just in terms of the overall design the cooling and expandability, but you might be noticing that I'm using this front USB port with this flash drive. Well, the reason that that's there is because I'm running Unraid on this system. Now, if you know anything about Unraid, you might be confused by why I'm using that on a mini PC, but let me explain. If you don't know, Unraid as an operating system is essentially designed to let you build your own NASes, and it is a paid operating system. It's not open source, even though it is built off of a lot of Linux stuff, it is its own operating system. Now I've been using Unraid as my home NAS operating system for going on almost 10 years. I think this is year eight of having an Unraid server as my main NAS. And I actually have two of them. Unraid recently went through some changes where it went from being a one-time payment operating system to a subscription model. So I actually have two systems where one is a lifetime key and I have another one that's a subscription. But the way that the operating system is designed it's mostly meant for you to just be able to manage a bunch of hard drives it's not necessarily designed around ssds but that doesn't necessarily mean that it does a bad job at that especially because over the years unraid has gotten some great features that has made it one of the easiest and quickest ways to actually get a home server set up and i wanted to see how a mini pc like this would actually pair with that operating system and all of this really comes down to the fact that it has the community applications section where it is essentially a community hub where people will upload docker templates that you can download so that you can get a lot of different programs running on here and one of my favorite things to use in the community applications is actually setting up servers for games see if you're somebody that plays a lot of minecraft or really any other kind of game that lets you self-host your game servers you might find that a lot of services charge quite a bit of money for hosting you can be paying as little as ten dollars a month but some of these services, depending on what you want to do and how many people you want to play, can end up charging you $20, $30, even $40 a month. And the hardware that they're using is a lot of the time still worse than what we have in this mini PC. So let's take a look at some of the things that we could actually get up and running on this mini PC without the emphasis on the whole hard drive based NAS system where you have parity. All right, so here we are on the Unraid dashboard and you can see pretty much a lot of the information of the system. You can see here the 6950H. You can see all of the individual cores and threads and it's great because it splits up the individual cores with their hyper threaded threads. So you can pretty much see all the individual cores and and threads and you'll know the grouping for them if you want to individually split things you can see i'm currently running a docker container and that is an enshrouded server we're pretty much going to be testing that out to see how well that works right now but you can see some more information you can see the ram allocation and you can even get some extensions that will add on to this so you can get some more information one of the ones that i usually like to get is actually one that gives you some more information specifically about gpu usage because you can pass through your iGPU onto virtual machines which you can actually set up here or if you're letting a program like Plex have access to your GPU you can see if the media engine in it is actually being utilized for transcoding. Now over here this is the community application section and this is the thing that makes Unraid honestly my favorite favorite operating system to use for setting up servers. Obviously, you're able to set up a server pretty easily with just a USB install, but the benefit also is that you very rarely ever have to use a command line. It is all just based off of this GUI that works really, really well. And that's a big selling point because of the fact that, yes, you can set up a server for free. Yes, you can use a lot of different applications out there that are designed to give you as much of an interface as possible possible for your server and of course I know a lot of you guys love to live in the command line and if you're that kind of person great but if you're someone that's just trying to get started or you just don't care to sit there and learn all of this you just want to get your applications your programs running you don't really want to sit there messing with a lot of things Unraid is honestly the best experience that I've ever had on setting up a server and with the wide variety of different applications that they have here you can get quite a lot done even if you're someone that is messing around with with machine learning if you have an nvidia gpu you can get a comfy ui 
AI setup for NVIDIA very, very quickly. And this is really, really great. Of course, one of my favorite sections is the game server section because of the fact that you're able to very quickly and easily start hosting your own game servers for you and your friends. Now, keep in mind, though, that if you plan on making this open for other people, you are going to have the port forward. And that does mean that you are going to be exposing ports of yours to the open internet. So be very careful about who you are allowing onto your system if you're not going to be running behind a service like Tailscale that is essentially designed to let you run your applications in a public setting, essentially. If it's just you and your friends that you're going to be playing games with, you don't need to go crazy with the security, but it's always best to err on the side of caution. But just keep in mind that a lot of the times when you're setting things up like that, you might end up having to pay money just because you might need a subdomain or some kind of proxy to not expose your own network to the direct internet. Now you can see here also some of the most popular downloads. Of course, there's going to be a wide variety of different Minecraft versions on here. There's actually a quite a bit of different options. Now, Pterodactyl here is actually a very interesting way of setting up your servers because it becomes a user interface where you can manage a wide variety of different game servers and it makes it very easy to actually get those set up and started. But it does have quite a bit that you have to do beforehand to really get things started. You're pretty much going to have to set up your own SQL server. You're going to essentially be going through an entire process to get this up and running. I recommend you do it if you plan on hosting a good bit of servers. But if you're currently just playing right now a individual game with your friends, you are going to be just fine using one of these types of Docker servers here. And as you can see, there is a wide variety of different games that are supported on here. Keep in mind that all of this depends on whether or not a game even allows you to self-host your own server. And there's even some convenient ones set up that already have certain mod packs pre-installed for things like Minecraft. So if that's something that you don't even want to bother with, again, there is just a one-click solution here. Keep in mind, though, that again, you are going to have to port forward for each individual server in this kind of scenario. Now, as I said, there's a wide variety of different games supported, but just keep in mind that there might be some distinctions in terms of what you can and can't get away with with some of these systems. For example, if you try to install a PAL World server here, I'm going to tell you that you're going to need at least 32 gigabytes of free system memory. Memory. So that's quite a lot of memory that you're going to need there. And the server is recommended to be restarted every 24 hours. This really just comes down to the fact that Power World isn't exactly the best designed game or the most optimized. But it's good that it gives you this warning so that if you encounter any issues, you at least know roughly where to start. You might not have enough memory. You might be running into issues with that. Or it could just be that it's been a while since you've last restarted your server. And you can automate these kinds of things. So you saw that I had an intro shrouded server already downloaded and I want to download one for abiotic factor as well. So I'm running through the whole install process of it right now. You can see that it is pretty much doing everything for us here. It's pulling the install. It's going to download everything that it needs for it, at least just to initially launch. Though keep in mind that it is going to take a little while after it launches for everything to fully download because this is not it downloading the actual game files or anything like that itself. It is just downloading the Docker image that's needed. But if we go to the dashboard here, you can see that Abiotic Factor is running and Enshrouded is running. Enshrouded should already be downloaded, but Abiotic Factor is going to take a little bit. So we're going to let that run for a little while. And here you can see that the system is doing something right now. You can see the cores are being used across the board, though not by a lot. But there is definitely things happening right now. So we're going to let that run for a little bit. But we're going to jump in and see if we can't join the Enshrouded server. All right, so here I am loaded into the new server that I set up and we were able to connect perfectly fine. Of course, I am on the local network and this is a brand new server, so everything is starting off pretty much brand new. This is a pretty demanding game though, surprisingly at least. I tried it originally with the maximum graphic settings and my 3070 was really getting hammered because of it. But here we are actually loaded in here and overall the performance is exactly where I would expect it to be for the hardware 
hardware that we have here. But let's actually see what this is doing to the mini PC that is running this server. So here you could see what the dashboard is showing. Clearly the CPU is doing something. All of the cores and threads are busy doing at least something, but the overall utilization of everything is pretty low. I mean, we're reaching at this point, not even four gigabytes of RAM being utilized. The CPU is at about 20%. And again, this is just with me connected on there. But let's see what happens if I can get a friend to join in. All right, so at this point, I have two friends that have joined into the server right now. I'm gonna try to meet up with them. They're somewhere in the spawn area. Oh yeah, I could see one of them right there. So yeah, that's already two friends that are able to join in. Remember, you do have to port forward for that to happen. But let's take a look at the Unraid dashboard and see what is even happening there. So with three people on the server, you can see that our load really has not increased much at all. Neither has the amount of RAM that we've utilized. Of course, we still haven't started doing anything major on here yet. But as of right now, having three people connected is not really doing too much to hurt the overall experience. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to get a server set up. You can have multiple servers running, though keep in mind that if you want to have multiple people joining in that you might not fully trust or know, you want to set up something like Tailscale so that we could avoid all of the issues of having these open ports just straight to the internet. But this is just the quick and easy way of getting it set up. And as long as you have a relatively small friend group that you're okay with just having access to your stuff like that, then it's not really that big of a deal, especially if these aren't going to be 24 seven running server. But it does show that many PCs are capable of actually running these game servers really, really well. And we have more than enough headroom to do plenty of other things on here. If we want to run a Plex server, we can do that easily. Though keep in mind that you are kind of limited in the amount of storage that you can get on here. But as you can see, the community applications page has so many different things that you can get set up and running on here. And if these game servers aren't really pushing this system all that hard, the vast majority of these things aren't really going to be pushing your system all that hard. So you're going to have a lot of headroom to do quite a lot of things. Now, recommending Unraid is one of those things where it's become a lot more difficult because of the fact that it is now a subscription-based operating system. You pay an initial fee, and then every year that you want continuous updates, you're going to have to pay $30. This is a tough pill to swallow in comparison to how things used to be, where you could just pay a flat fee depending on just how many drives you wanted access to. But it is still one of the easiest and quickest ways to get all these different services up and running on your own system without ever having to leave a GUI. There is also a 30-day trial that you can try out of the operating system if you want to see if it fits your purposes. But just keep in mind that you are going to need multiple drives if you want to have parity and things like that. And you might have to look into a system that lets you have actual hard drives if you want to have some pretty big storage. But if you're someone that just wants to be able to run some services really easily, set up game servers really easily, and again, you never want to leave a GUI, this is a really great implementation that honestly is still the best of all of the different NAS operating systems that I've ever tried. Even true NAS does not reach the same level ease of setup and use as Unraid does. Whether that's worth the price or not to you really just depends, but it is interesting that a mini PC like this actually is capable of doing all of this really, really well. Overall, I'm very impressed with the results that I got out of this mini PC. Now, does that mean I'm going to end up recommending Unraid to you? Not necessarily. It's definitely something that you can consider though. I would like to see Unraid start to try to make their operating system kind of just work on pretty much any kind of system, not really just be super hardline focused on just the NAS section of the market because of the fact that it is a very good operating system that has a lot of utility because you might not necessarily want or need a lot of storage and can make a storage server but you might actually want to run quite a few services because even if you're not trying to host gaming servers like what I was doing in this video, there's still a lot of different programs that you can be running on here that can really help improve your day-to-day -day life. And the real benefit of Unraid is the fact that you're just able to do that so quickly without ever having to leave a GUI. And for somebody that's just trying to start out, someone that's just brand new to creating a home server, they really just have a main goal in mind and they're just trying to get to that. Being able to just stick to a GUI and not have to use a command line, a lot of the times is going to be a lot easier for people. Of course, if you're a command line pro, it's always an option there for you. And for the time and energy that you put into getting good with command line, you're gonna be able to
able to set all of this up for free. But for the brand new users out there that kind of just want something that they can set up and get working as soon as possible, Unraid does have some pretty major selling features because of that. So definitely consider it. You can always try it out for 30 days. It was definitely a fun experiment and it really does show that these mini PCs do have quite a lot of power to them. But I'll catch you guys in the next one.